Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to finish our Animal Park app by completing Animal Escape. This little image sprite is going to move around our screen and your job is going to be to hit them. And you'll get points if you hit them here, you'll get misses if you miss them. Um, this is our play button and this is the sound checkbox that we're going to code. So let's get started. Let's go to blocks. First thing we need to do is, as always, we need to program our home button. So I'm gonna go our home image, I'm gonna click on image home, bring in clicked. Now, one thing we always wanna do, image home, make sure you select clickable. If you do not, this block will not work even when you have it coded correctly. Just like we've done for the other screens, we already made a procedure for going home because on every screen, for example, if I go back to Animal Draw, you can see I have this go home procedure. You can also see that we place that inside of our backpack. So. I'm gonna to go to Animal Escape. Remember this backpack allows you to save code that you're gonna reuse. I click on the backpack. You can see I could have just dragged this out, but I'm gonna drag out, go home. If I drag this out, I'm gonna get an error. Anytime you see this little red error, I have two errors, you need to find what that error is because you will not be able to compile your app. There's a duplicate event handler for this component. Well, if you think about it, there is. There's two image homes dot click. We can't have the same event because the computer will not know which one to do. So I have to get rid of one of these. So simply if I delete this, you can see it gets rid of it. There's no longer two image homes dot clicked. So whenever someone clicks image home, it's gonna say going home, it's going to close that screen. So that's pretty simple. But also we need to do our back button. So I'm gonna click on animal escape. When back is pressed, what I wanna do I want to go to procedures. Now that I've added that procedure, you can see go home here and there you go. So when the screen opens, let's say animals have escaped, please help us. So anytime you want to code when the screen opens, I'm going to click on animal escape. Look for one of my events that will be when the screen opens. You can see back press error occurred initialize. It is this one. Remember if you mouse over a block, you will be able to see what it does. The initialize event runs when the screen starts and only once per screen. I want to pull this out and I want to use my text to speech. Click on text to speech, bring this in. And this is going to say, animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. And there we go. Now, we want to, we have hits, misses, we have a score, we have play, and we have a sound. We want to move this guy around. Well, to move this person around, we need a concept of time. So every second or every half a second, we want to move this person. Well, we actually don't have a time component here. On the previous video, when we designed this, we didn't even think about that. So we actually need to go back to design and add this new component that we've not used yet. So I'm back here in design. I'm gonna to go to sensors. We've used the accelerometer sensor on our animal sounds. And you can see there's a bunch of sensors, barcode, barometer, clock, gyroscope, hygrometer, light sensor, pedometer. There's a bunch of things here. We want time, what time is a clock? I'm gonna drag that and it shows up. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. And you can see our text to speech is working, but also the clock is a non visible component. It always fires, it's enabled, and timer interval is a thousand milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds is one second. So if we wanted it half a second, I would do 500. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. And the play game is pretty much, when I press play, it's either going to turn the timer enabled on. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. So if I turn this off, the animal will start moving. If I turn this on. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. The animal will start moving. So let's go to blocks and code it so you can see the clock will move the animal. I'm gonna click on clock. 
It has, again, as a clock, it has a bunch of procedures that are built in, like day of the month, duration. It has your properties, which are your green blocks. And it has one event, clock timer. So let's pull this out. If you mouse over, the timer event runs when the timer has gone off. So the timer is, this is your timer, every half a second, 500 milliseconds. Whatever we put in here will occur. Well, what do we want to happen? We want the animal to move around. So to have the animal move around, we have to think about something. We want the animal to move inside of the canvas. The canvas over here is zero X. We want it to move from zero X randomly to this position. This little point right here is the canvas's width. So my X needs to be a random value between zero and the canvas's width. That way I can pick a random value here and my Y is from this point, zero Y, all the way down to this point, which is a canvas height. So I need to randomly move this person from zero to the canvas width and zero to the canvas height. What does that look like? First, let's go click on image spray. These are the event blocks that you have. You have dragged, edge reach, flung. Flung is what you do with Angry Birds. No longer colliding with, touch down, touch up. These are the procedure blocks that it has. You have bounce off edge, colliding with. You have move to, point direction, point towards. What we want is the move to. Pull this, put that in there. And you can see it says I have the wrong number of arguments. You will not see another error for five seconds. That's because every half a second, this is trying to make this animal move, but I don't have any points in here. So you can see every five seconds. So for right now, let's turn timer off. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. Let's turn this off so we won't see the error until we fill this in. So again, I want to go from zero X to the canvas width, and I would pick a random value. Well, random numbers come from the subject called math, and we have our math built-in blocks. I click on math, and you can see at the top, I have random integer from one to 100. Put that in here. I also want a random value for from zero to this, so I'm gonna go back to math, and I'm gonna put that in here. Now I don't want it from one to 100, and let me show you why. I actually want, let's just change this to zero, and zero to 100. I'm gonna go back to designer and turn on my timer enabled. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. So it looks like 100 is like this little portion of the screen. And we don't just want him moving around here. We want him moving around the entire thing. So that's why I'm telling you we want to go from zero to the canvas's width. So I don't know what the canvas is width. I don't want to do like 200, for example. If I do that, you can see now he moves a little bit more. And even if I did this 300, see now it's like he can come down here. Actually what I want is what I said. I'm gonna go to canvas. Canvas has a width property. So I'm just gonna pull that. So now you can see he can move all the way between zero and the canvas's width. I'm gonna pull this out. And I want him to be able, I have it at 300, which is here, but let's say I had a really big tablet. That might not look right. I want it to be the height. I don't want it to be 300. I want it to be the canvas's height. So now you can see we have our animal moving all around our screen. So remember I said we don't want it just to be the hyena. We want it to be a couple of our animals. So we're gonna have five animals that you may hit and if you hit the animal it's going to play a sound in order to have those five animals and to change it we're going to make a list you're going to need to make a list in your create performance task exam that you will take later on in this year when you build your own app so this is some good practice to make a list we're first going to make a variable and the name of this variable is going to be animal picks and we're making a variable that way we can reference this list so we can call it anywhere in our program on this screen. I'm going to click on list. I'm going to make a list, pull this block out and I want five things. Well, first let's fill these in. And I only have two. So I only have two. I want to have five different animals. So remember, 
The only reason I have two items on my list here is because that's how it started. But anytime you see this blue settings box, I can click on that and I'm only going to drag in three more. Now shortcut, I'm going to click on this text on this list and I'm going to type on my keyboard TXT and press enter. And if I click on this again, TXT, you'll see it'll automatically get that text box and fill it in. Again, I'm going to click on the make a list TXT, just type and you can see it fills it in. So my animal picks, I will have five different animal picks from over here in our media that will change this randomly. And let's get that working. So the name has to exactly match. You can see my names are pretty straightforward. Alligator.jpg. So I want to put five animal pictures in here. So I'm gonna click on alligator. I'm gonna click on download to the computer. I'm gonna copy the name of that file and I'm just going to paste it in here. I'm going to go to, we have a Cobra. I'll do that one as well. I'm going to click download to my computer. That's the sound file. I actually want the image. I don't see my Cobra image. Here it is, King Cobra. So I'm going to click on download to computer. I'm going to copy that, press cancel, paste that inside of there. I do have the hyena there, so I'm going to click on hyena. Make sure you're doing the image, not the wave sound, the JPEG or PNG. Again, I'm going to copy that, press cancel, paste that in here. I saw the elephant, so right here, elephants. Looks like I have two, download to computer. I'm gonna copy that, cancel, and paste that in here. And I need one more, who else do I want? Let's do the tiger, sure. Download the computer, I'm gonna copy that and paste that in here. So now I have a list of different images that are in my media. I can, in one mock of code, every time the, the animal moves, change it by picking a random picture from this list. And how are we gonna do that? Well, if we go back to designer, our image sprite, we set this picture as hyena. That's why he's hyena. But remember your properties blocks are your green blocks. So I can simply change this picture block to pick one of the random pictures from the list that we just created. And if we do that, then the animal picture will update. So instead of saying hyenas.jpg, I simply could say alligator.jpg or kingcobra.jpg. And I want to do that inside of my timer because my timer is what makes this move. So I want to go to image sprite, scroll down to my properties blocks. Here is picture, I want to set the picture, I want to change it. So I'm gonna put that in here. I'm gonna get an error. So I'm gonna set the picture and I'm gonna pick a random image from our animal pics. So I'm going to go up list. You can see this has right here, pick a random item from the list. And now you can see I'm getting error because it's trying to pick it every half a second. I'm gonna get the error again because I did not complete that block. So to fix that error, I wanna pick from a list, what list? This list, animals. I'm gonna pull this and put this in there. And that should dismiss our error. Now if you look here, look what's happening. It's randomly picking things from here. You can see there's the tiger, snake, and this is going super fast. Let's slow it down. So I'm gonna click on my clock and let's make it every second. So that's a thousand milliseconds. Animals have escaped. Please help us catch them. So you can see now you can better see that my animal pick are changing. So just like we have animal picks, later on when we hit this, we want to play that animal sound of the animal that you actually hit. But first, let's work on hitting and missing. So whenever you touch the canvas, we did this in draw, it knows exactly where you touched, but also it knows if you touched a sprite. So since this is a sprite, we'll know if we hit something or we missed something. And we need canvas touched. So on the left side, we're gonna click on canvas and you can see here's the events. I have dragged, flung, and you can see here drag any sprite. That's what you use for Angry Birds. Flung any sprite, 
and you can see right here we have touched. I'm gonna pull this out. So I wanna know if I touched a sprite. So if I do that, if I do that, I wanna update hits. But if I hit the grass instead of that, I wanna update misses. So I wanna say if I touched any sprite. And you can see touched any sprite is right here. It's a part of the canvas anytime you touch it. But I need the if part. Remember that's how computers make decisions. That comes from control. It is a condition. So I'm gonna click on control. Here's my if block. We will cover this more in depth later on in the school year when we talk about conditions and nested conditions. But for now, we're just going to do a very simple if block. I'm saying if I touch the sprite. So when I mouse over, I'm not clicking on this. I'm just, if you click on it, it might hide the block or collapse the block. I'm gonna mouse over this. I'm gonna to get touched any sprite. And what I want to do is update this value up here. But let's just test this just to see that this works. So I'm going to use a simple text-to-speech. And I'm just going to say hit sprite. So over here. Hit sprite. Hit sprite. Hit sprite. Hit sprite. So you can see inside of here is if I touch the sprite, I hit it. Well, what if I didn't? What if I hit the grass? Hit, that, hit sprite. See, if I hit the grass, I'm not hitting the sprite. So either I'm going to hit the sprite or else I'm not, which will be my misses. So this if block, I need an else statement. I have this little green settings icon. I'm going to click on that to expand, and I'm going to do else. So either I hit it or else I didn't. Just to show you that, I'm gonna put a text of speech in there and I'm gonna call miss sprite. So now let's just see. Hit sprite, miss sprite, miss sprite, miss sprite, miss sprite, miss sprite, hit sprite, hit sprite, hit sprite. So you can see these are the two blocks that we pretty much need with Canvas in order to do our hits and our misses. Now, something else we will need is we need to keep track of how many times hit sprite. we hit it or how many times miss sprite. we miss it. So instead of saying hit sprite, this is animal escape. Let's call it caught animal and let's call this missed animal. And let's just make sure we test it. So caught animal, missed animal, caught animal. So you can see that works. Now we want to update these values, animals that we caught and animals that we missed. In order to keep track of that, we need a variable. Variables can change. So anytime we caught, animal. caught an animal, we want to update that variable. And anytime we missed animal, we want to update a variable in that label. So we're gonna need two variables. Click on variables, bring in, I'm just gonna drag this down so I'm my variables are together. And this is hits. And my original number for the hits will be zero which comes from math. And I'm gonna do another variable, initialize global, and I'm gonna call this miss. And also I'm gonna go to math, and I'm gonna pull out this. So anytime I hit the animal, I wanna do two things. I want to first update this. So right now hits is zero. I wanna update hits, and then I wanna update the label. Anytime I miss the animal, I wanna update miss, and then I wanna update the label. And remember, just so you can see, this is the label here. Label hits, label misses. So anytime I touch a sprite, which is this. Caught animal. Caught animal, I want to update hits. So I want to mouse over. Remember, don't click. If you click, it thinks you want to rename it. I'm just going to mouse over it. I want to change it, so I'm going to do set. Hits, what I want to set it to, it's zero. I want it to go to one. So when I add one to whatever the current hits is, well, addition comes from the subject called math. On math, bring in this. And I said I want to add one to it, so I'm going to pull in a zero and change that to one. Now, this part, one to what? Well, I want to add one to zero, but I don't want to put zero here because it always will be equal to one. I want to add one to whatever the current hits is. So I'm going to mouse over this. And there we go. So hits is equal to hits plus one. Now, if I hit the sprite. Cock animal. Cock animal. 
Clock animal. Clock animal. This is not going up. Well, why isn't it going up? If you think about it, I only updated the variable hits. I did not update the label hits. So after we update this variable, we need to update the label. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to pull in label hits. Oops. And let's connect it. There we go. And I want a join statement. So I'm going to go to text, click on join. The first part I wanted to say animals, not text. Pull this in. I'm going to type animals just like I have it with a colon. The next part is what the new value of hits is. So mouse over hits. I'm going to pull this in. So now, remember I hit the animal like three times before. So this is going to jump to like four or five, depending on how many times I hit it. But now let's see. Clock animal. So five. Clock animal. Six, and you can see here it keeps going updated now here's an issue we have when it gets too big it smushes up our sound so let's make those two label hits smaller let's make it like 10 animals have escaped please help us catch them animals have escaped please help us catch them so I'm making both of these 10 that way. As we get bigger, you'll see when I hit it 10 times. Missed animal. Cut 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 animal. So you can see it still has space there. Let's work on our misses. So I just showed you how to do hits. Pause the video and see if you can do misses on your own. So let me just go through this again. If I touched a sprite, I said caught animal, I updated my hits to hits plus one, and then I updated my label. You do the exact same thing, but you're gonna do it for misses. So pause the video and try to update your misses and then test it when you click on the grass. animal. This should be updated. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you were able to figure it out. All you had to do was add these blocks down here. Miss is equal to miss plus one. And label misses.txt is equal to miss with the current value of misses. So I've already missed a couple of times, so when I missed animal, missed animal, missed animal, missed animal. You can see it goes up. Cut animal. So you can see that is also working. So that's pretty much our game. So we're going to be done with this video. In the next video, we're not done with the app yet. We still have to code the play button, the score, the turning sound on and off. But for now, our basics of our game is working. In the next videos, we will continue with finishing up our app. We're going to add some extra functionality, some sound, and all these other things.